Look with me. Close John chapter 4 and go with me to John the 9th chapter. Where are we going to? John the 9th chapter. The Bible says in John chapter 9, beginning with verse number 4. The Bible says, are we there? The Bible says, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh. The what, my friends? What cometh? The Bible says, uh, the night cometh uh, when no man, what? When no man can work. What does this mean? The night cometh. The night cometh uh, when no man can work. The night cometh, not just physical night, friends. No, not at uh, dusk. No, friends. The night cometh, the Bible says, when what? When no man can work. Go to Isaiah 59 with me. Don't lose John 9. Go to Isaiah chapter 59. Where are we going to? My friends, this theme, the night cometh when no man can work. It's talking about the time when Jesus Christ, in the primary sense, will no longer intercede on behalf of humanity. When all of us, We'll have to stand before a righteous, holy God without a mediator. No man can work. Christ will cease his work of intercession. Verse 16 confirms of Isaiah chapter 59. The Bible says, And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no one, that there was no intercessor therefore what friends his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness the bible says that it sustained him is there coming a time when there'll be no more an intercessor for humanity when no man can work i must work the what the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, human probation is closing, my friends. Revelation, close John, close Isaiah, Revelation chapter 14. Where are we going to, friends? Uh, Revelation chapter 14, and notice now, the Bible gives us that specific event, that what, friends? That specific event, uh, which shows us the time when Jesus would no longer intercede no longer work for humanity and that specific event is at the enforcing of the mark of the beast verse 9 the bible says if any man does what if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his what in his forehead his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into his cup of indignation. Pause right there. Is there a time coming when God's wrath will be poured out upon unrepentant sinners? And when is this, my friends? When the mark of the beast is enforced? The passing of a Sunday law with persecution for God's people who refuse to bow. So Jesus now says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh. The night cometh. The close of human probation cometh. When what? No man, no woman, no boy, no girl can work. It is over, my friends. So question, how close are we then to the enforcing of this mark of the beast? How close are we? And the Bible gives us signs to show us how close we are to the enforcing of the mark of the beast. How close we are to destruction of unrepentant sinners. How close we are when Jesus will no longer intercede on behalf of suffering humanity. And the Bible gives us these signs in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 
verse 1 through verse 3. The Bible says, Now, brethren, are the times and seasons. You have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that what? The day of the Lord so cometh as a what? A thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. Let's go again. For when they shall say, what friends? Peace and safety. The Bible says, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not what? They shall not um, escape. What will they not escape? Destruction? Who will not escape this, my friends? Uh, those uh, who reject Christ's offer of love, uh, Christ's offer of mercy, Christ's offer of truth, uh, Christ's offer of salvation. Bible says when they shall say what? Peace and safety. Friend, why would the world cry for peace and safety? What is the absent, or pardon me, what is contrary to peace? Is the world in a spirit of war? Is instability worldwide? So friends, the Bible says, when they shall say what? All right. Peace and safety. And friends, to whom do the people in the world look to as the man of peace? To whom, my friends, the Pope of Rome. Go to Daniel 8 with me. Where are we going to, my friends? So, beloved, it's Pope Francis marching around the whole world crying for peace. And where Obama and the U.S. have failed in merging and bringing peace, so-called peace in these nations. Notice, the man of sin. The Antichrist in the primary sense. The Pope of Rome apparently is bringing about peace, I said. Apparently. Look at the screen here, friends. Vatican Radio. The Friends, do not miss this. This is the United Nations head. General Secretary Ban Ki-moon. What does he say, friends? He says, Pope Francis... A man of what? Peace. And friends, uh, the Los Angeles Times says, uh, Pope Francis prays for what? Peace between whom? Uh, Israeli and Palestinians. And again, where we see Obama trying to merge uh, peace between the Israelis and uh, the Palestinians. Now, uh, apparently, the Pope is standing as the man of what? The man of peace. When they shall say what, friends? Peace and safety. Then what? Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is. Why? The night cometh, friends. Human probation cometh, friends, when no man can work and Daniel chapter 8, where are we going to? Daniel chapter 8 brings to view the faulty, the deceptive, the crafty policies of the papacy. Since your rise in 538 through 1798, and the Bible now tells us the papacy will re-emerge again. Look with me at Daniel chapter 8. Are we there, my friends? Verse number 23. The Bible says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the fall, the Bible says, Who now, friends? A king of fierce countenance and understanding what? Dark sentence shall do what, friends? Bible says, understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Who is this king of fierce countenance? Come on, we, we, we went through this in Bible class. Who is this? Wonderful. The king of fierce countenance in the last days is the papacy. Now on your sermon notes, 
Write down now on your note paper. Write down Deuteronomy 28, verse 48 through verse 50. And compare that with, okay, friends, it's on your sermon notes. And compare that with uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible tells us the king, the nation, a fierce countenance in Bible times is literal Babylon. Who? It's literal Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. But this scripture says, in Daniel chapter 8, in the latter times. What times? In the latter times. So this is a king of fierce countenance in the last days. Not literal Babylon now, but whom? Mystery. Finish it. Mystery whom? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Who is this, friends? It is the papacy. Go back to chapter 8 of Daniel. What does the Bible say? The king of fierce countenance will do in verse 23. Bible says what? Bible says a king of fierce countenance and understanding what? Dark sentences will do what? Will stand up. What does that mean? How many times have the Pope stood up? It's not a literal standing up, friends, on two feet. The stand up means what? To rule. To what, friends? Look with me. Daniel chapter, chapter 11. Where are we going to? Daniel chapter 11. The Bible confirms uh, the stand up means to rule. Uh, the papacy once ruled uh, the world uh, from 538 to when? S wonderful. 1798. But the Bible says she is going to stand up again. Look at verse 3. Bible says of Daniel chapter 11. Are we there, my friends? Uh, verse 3, the Bible says, uh, and a what king? And a mighty king shall what? Stand up. That shall rule. Go back to chapter 8, friends. Uh, so now, what will the papacy, what are the deceptive policies of the papacy? So we can understand uh, when she is about to stand up officially, and rule the world as she did between 538 and 1798. The Bible says, for by peace shall she destroy many. So while, hear me, hear me carefully, friends. So while she is apparently in the public arena promoting peace, peace, peace in the nations behind closed doors. By proxy, by substitute, vicariously, she's working through various entities uh, to stir up wars in the nations. Let's read that, friends. Watch this. Verse 25, are we there? Bible says, and through his policy also. Through what, friends? Through his policy also. He shall cause what? Craft. Craft, that's deception, craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by what? And by peace shall destroy many. Pause right there, I can't finish that. By peace shall he what? By peace shall he what, friends? Destroy. Who are the many? Verse 24 says, it is God's people. Look at verse 24. The Bible says, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall, what friends, destroy, there's your word, he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy whom? The mighty, and whom? And the holy people. Friends, listen, for the papacy to rise, to re-emerge in these last days, and to have a so-called peaceful reign, she must remove out of the way God's holy people. The papacy knows that God's holy people, they stand in the way of her rise and apparently peaceful reign. That means, friends, persecution is coming. And you ought not to get ready 
Just because persecution is coming, friends, don't fear the persecution. The point here is, oh, Father, please give us an understanding here. The point here is, my friends, uh, the time of trouble, such as never was, is soon to open upon us. And we shall need an experience which we do not now possess. And which many of us are too lazy to obtain. That's the urgency, my friends. The papacy is soon to stand up. Again, may I quote uh, the great controversy, page 621 and 622. It says, the time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us. And we shall need an experience which we do not now possess and which many of us are too indolent. Too lazy to obtain, it is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality. But this is not the case of the crisis before us. Oh, friends, Sister White says the most vivid presentation cannot describe the terrible ordeal before us. And what are God's people found doing right now, Ju uh, June 28th, uh, 2014, watching the World Cup? Watching the NBA, playing golf, uh, watching uh, reality TV shows, uh, these late night comedians, uh, when probation is soon to close. What are our young people engaged in? playing video games? What's going on, my friends? What are the ministers of God's remnant church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, are now doing? They are sleeping in the pulpit, sleeping preachers, preaching to a sleeping church. It's right upon us, my friends. Right upon us. And we are told, friends, watch the point. We are told, my friends, the same way in which uh, the papacy, beloved, hear me carefully. Let me back this thing up. Friends, hear me carefully. Hear me carefully. The papacy knows who are the ones who are her viable threat to a peaceful reign. The papacy's understanding of peace is different from the Bible's peace. Jesus says, no peace saith my God to those who break the Ten Commandments. No peace, saith my God to whom the wicked. The paper says peace. is everybody in harmony bowing to her false policies. That's her peace, my friends. And the paper knows that there's one group that stands in our way. And it's true, Seventh-day Adventists. And how will the paper say now, friends, remove the holy and mighty people just by infiltrating the Seventh-day Adventist churches with wolves in sheep's clothing, apostate ministers, preaching damnable heresies to destroy the foundation of our faith. Friends, hear me carefully. The papacy knows, Pope Francis knows, uh, the majority of present Seventh-day Adventists are already on his side. He knows that. But there's a small little faithful group. The small faithful group, my friends, uh, that he is going to confront very, very soon. Friends, you're not hearing me. Yeah. Are we ready, my friends? It says, uh, the time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us. And we shall need an experience which we do not now possess. And which many of us are too lazy to obtain. We are here, my friends. Let me give an example of the coming crisis. We are told in great controversy, my friends, uh, the way how the papacy worked uh, in the time of the French Revolution, what, my friends, where? In the French Revolution, 
the papacy will work against God's people in the last days. Hear what this says, education. Page 228 says, uh, the worldwide dissemination of the same what, friends? The same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle, what, friends? Similar to that which convolves France. What did the papacy do against the Protestant reformers in the time of the French Revolution? Great controversy. Page 276 says, uh, Popery, let's read. Popery had poisoned the minds of kings against the Reformation as an enemy to the crown, an element of discord that would be fatal to what, friends? The peace and harmony of the nation. Pause right there. So what did the papacy say against the Protestant reformers during the French Revolution? That these Protestants, these reformers, they are what? Enemies to peace and harmony in the nation. So friends, when the papers says, we want peace, is to get rid of whom? To get rid of whom? The last remnant, true Protestant reformers. These are those, my friends, who, who adhere, who accept the true teachings of the Bible. Seventh-day Adventism. Are you ready for this war, my friends? It says, back to the screen, it says, Rome was not slow to inflame their jealous fears, said the Pope to the region of France. In 1525, this what? This mania, let's read, this mania, Protestantism, will not only confound and destroy religion, but all principalities, Nobility, laws, orders, and what? Ranks. Besides, we have to get rid of the Protestants. It says, my friends, on page 277, great controversy, it says, a few years later, a papal nuncio warned the king. Let's read what it says. Sire, be not deceived. The whom? The Protestants will upset all civil as well as uh, religious order, the throne, that's the civil government, the throne is in as much danger as the what? As the altar, as the church. Oh, friends, we, oh, Father, please. The papacy, does the Bible say the papacy will change? What symbol does God give to the papacy in Revelation chapter 13? It's a leopard, my friends. The leopard with the papacy ever change. And what did she say against the Protestants? If we want peace in the civil government, if we want peace in the church, who must we get rid of? Who must we get rid of? The true Protestants. Friends, do we see what's on the horizon for us? It says here, thus Rome, let's read. Thus Rome succeeded in arraying France against the what? The Reformation. So pause. So what Rome did to France, getting France to kill the Protestant Christians, Rome will get America and all the various nations to kill whom? Ah, oh, friends, do you see it now? The true Protestant reformers in these last days, it says Rome succeeded in arraying France against what? The Reformation. It was to uphold the throne, preserve the nobles, and maintain the laws that what, friends? That the sword of persecution was first what? On sheathed in France. Oh, friends, Daniel chapter 8 once more. The Bible says, for by peace shall she what? For by peace, uh, what will the papacy do, my friends? By peace, uh, the Bible says, uh, the papacy will destroy harmony. 
Who are the many? The holy and the mighty people. For her to have a peaceful reign, the paper similes, she must destroy the true Protestants. Anyone who stands in our way, friend, when I ask a question, why do you think then the papacy is warring against Islam? Think, friend. Think, when God is through with us, what you see on the media will make sense now. Why do you think the papacy, by proxy, who is fighting the papacy's war? Who will restore power to the papacy? Which nation? Which nation first will restore power to the papacy? Who will heal the papal wound? So friends, question, so who is behind America's war? It's the papacy. So why is the papacy through America? And America's allies, why is the papacy warring against Islam? Huh? Why, friends? Hear me carefully. The papacy understands that Islam is a viable threat to her re-emergence, a viable threat to her peaceful reign. Hear me carefully. Some of you who are visitors here on this Sabbath, that flew over your head. Do you know why? Some of you have never studied chapter 9 of the Revelation. Look at the screen here, friends. In chapter 9 of Revelation, we have both uh, the fifth and the sixth trumpets. Which entity is revealed under the fifth and sixth trumpets? It's Islam. And who, which entity was Islam warring against under the fifth and sixth trumpets? It is Islam, it is Rome, pardon me. Islam was persecuting Rome. Do you see what's going on now, friends? So the papacy understands Islam is a viable threat. Are we together? That's why there are uprisings and unsettlement going on in the various Islamic Muslim nations. By peace shall she what? Destroy. Many, ah, oh, friend, well, hear me now. Islam, literally, radical Islam, ra radical Muslims, they literally use the sword. Amen? But guess what? There is another threat to the papacy. It's not Islam, friends. It is true Protestants. It is true Seventh-day Adventists. While radical Muslims use a literal sword to kill, God's people use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the papacy knows in order for her to rise, to re-emerge and have a peaceful reign, she must overthrow Islam. And she must overthrow whom? I, come on, I saw it. I heard it. She must also silence true Protestants. What happened a few months ago in 2014, friends? Look at the screen here. When the Pope of Rome, John, he, he brought in the charismatic movement on the Rome and all the other so-called evangelicals or, 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 or Protestant denominations, let's all come back to Rome. And Tony Palmer echoing Pope Francis' word said, since 1999, the Protestant Reformation is over. Are we together, friends? It's over. So what is the Pope saying? We have one entity left to have a peaceful reign. That's Islam. But hear me carefully. The papacy knows it's not Islam is the greatest threat. It's those who have the sword of the Spirit. Those who are preaching the present truth, they are the ones who will call God's people out from Babylon. Ah, oh, friends, you're not hearing this. We are the greatest hindrance to the success of the papacy. And the Bible says, by peace shall she what? So my friends, how close are we then to a great crisis? 
and friends, I repeat again, the time of trouble such as never was is soon to break open upon us and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess and which many of us are too indolent to obtain. Look at the screen. It says here, my friends, Joel Osteen. Is he a mega church pastor? Friends, question, does he carry some level and measure of influence in the Christian realm? And who has Joel Osteen now joined hands with? Ah, friends, with the Pope of Rome, it says here, Joel Osteen meets with Pope Francis at Vatican. And what does Joel say? He says, uh, he, the Pope, uh, made the church more what? Ah, oh, friends, he has made, look at the screen, he has what, friends? He has made the Roman Catholic Church uh, more and inclusive. Beloved, are we close to a crisis now? So since the majority of those who profess to be Protestants have now put down the principles of Protestantism, have now bowed the knees to Baal. They're now kissing the Pope. I wonder, friends, are you going to bow too? Beloved, very, very soon, the Pope, the papacy is going to confront us. Don't be scared. But friends, the battle lines have been drawn. Listen to what this says. Great controversy. Page 618 says, as, let's read, as whom? As Satan influenced Esau to march against Jacob, so he was stir up the wicked to destroy God's people in the time of trouble. And as Satan accused Jacob, he will urge his accusations against the, the people of God. He numbers the world as uh, his subjects. But the little who, friends? Who is that? These are commandment-keeping people, friends. These are true Seventh-day Adventists. Back to the screen, it says, but he what, friend, but whom? But the little company who keep the commandments of God are what, friends, are resisting his supremacy. If he could what? Block them from the earth. His triumph would be complete. So why is there a war on Islam? If he could block them out, the papacy thinks, his triumph would be complete. But is Islam the greatest hindrance to the papacy? Who is it, my friends? It is a true commandment, keeping people, those who will give the loud cry message of Revelation chapter 18. Come out from her, my people, all oh my friends. It is us, it says, if he could blot out that little company. Friends, how many boast to be Seventh-day Adventists now in the world? Beloved, it's only a little company that's going to make it, my friends. And today, we have a choice to be in that group. In that group, friends, Jesus says, I must work up the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh. Oh, friends, are we close to the night? Are we close to the close of human probation when the mark of the beast will be enforced? How close are we to the night? Oh, friends, I was, uh, oh, friends, I was awakened when I saw this quotation. Great controversy. Page 60 says, everyone together, one sentence. What it says, friends, uh, but the what? Ah, oh, beloved. We don't understand this. One more time. It says what, friends? It says, uh, but the noon of the papacy was the midnight of the world. What happens to the sun at noontime? It shines the brightest. Which pope in the past 100 years 
have caused the Roman Catholic Church to be inclusive, to be attractive, to be shot in the brightest. It is Pope Francis. So my friends, do you understand the weight of that one sentence? It says, the noon of the papacy is midnight for the world. And Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Why? The night cometh when no man can work. How will we know it's midnight, friends? It says when the papacy is rising in popularity. Which Pope, my friends? It's Pope Francis. Watch this carefully. It says, uh, what, what does Time magazine say? What, my friends? Now, that, that, that did not say the Roman Catholic Church's Pope, right? Didn't say that, right? It says the people's Pope. Which people? The world. It says, uh, friends, we just read earlier, it said, the United Nations General Secretary, Ban Ki-moon, that's a civil power, said, we will unite with the papacy's purpose to bring about what? Peace. What? What is the papacy's objective to bring about peace? Who will they destroy to bring about peace? True Protestants. It doesn't matter which nation you live in. You can fly. I've heard people say, you better run to the Caribbean. You better leave America. The time of trouble is coming. Where are you going? Every nation, my friends. Every nation. And that is a civil power. Notice now the church power. Look at the screen. It says what? It says world council of churches, general secretary shares, he what, my friends? He shares with the Pope's aspirations for what? Unity, justice, and what? Peace. Ah, oh, friends, is it noontime for the papacy? And great controversy, page 60 says, the noon of the papacy signals what? Midnight for the world. Even Speaker Boehner, John Boehner, is saying what? Pope, come on over and speak to Congress. And it says, uh, NBC News, no Pope has ever addressed a joint meeting of Congress. Oh, friends, the noon of the papacy signals what? Oh, friends, if this is not awakening you, you are asleep, you're snoring. The noon of the papacy is what, my friends? It signals midnight for the world. And what does Jesus say? I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Why? The night cometh. Friends, is the night here? John chapter 6. Friends, is the night here? And what was Christ found doing when he made that statement? I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. The Bible tells us that Christ was found preaching and healing. Oh, friends. So what work must we be found doing, friends? What work must we be found doing? Preaching and doing medical missionary work. That's why we have to be trained, friends. The night cometh. Uh, and some of you say, why talk about the papacy? Well, Jesus says, uh, the noon of the papacy is what? Midnight for the world. Do you walk around without a timepiece, a watch, or a clock? The time tells you what to do. And so with prophecy, the noon, the popularity of the papacy signals what? It's midnight, friends. It's midnight. So what should we be engaged in? The same work as did Jesus Christ. John chapter 9. Are we there, my friends? Are we there? Verse 6 says of John 9, the Bible says, are we there? The Bible says, when he had thus spoken, 
he spat on the ground and made what? Clay of the spittle. And he what? He anointed the eyes of the blind man with the what? With the clay. What was he found doing, friends? What was he found doing? He was doing gospel, medical, missionary work. He had a twofold ministry. He was preaching and what? Healing. So safe to serve. What must be your work right now, friends? Ah, friends, we must work the works of him that sent us. While it is what? The night cometh when what, friends? No man can. Okay, watch this. Testimonies, volume 9, page 26 says, uh, everyone together, my heart is often burdened because so many who might work are doing how many things? Those who should be working are doing nothing. They are the sport, let's read, they are the sport of Satan's temptations. Every church member who has a knowledge of the truth is expected to work while the day lasts for the night cometh when no man can walk, work. Ere long, we shall understand. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, help us to grab these words, dear God. In Jesus' name. It says, friends, uh, every church member who has a knowledge of the truth is expected to work while the day lasts. For the night cometh wherein no man can work. Ere long, we shall understand what that night means. The Spirit of God is being grieved away from the earth. The nations are angry with one another. Pause. So when we hear of nations warring against nations, what does that signal? The night is here. Back to the screen. The nations are angry with one another. Widespread preparations are being made for war. Let's read. The night is at hand. It says, friends, widespread what? It says widespread preparations are being made for what? Friends, is that true? Examiner says, dot com says, the Department of Homeland Security adds 21.6 million rounds of ammunition to its nearly two billion round stockpile. Friends, are preparations being made for war? Is night upon us, friends? It says uh, the killer, back to the screen, the killer drone goes stealthy just in a time for what? Another War, my friends, are preparations being made for war. So what does this signal, Seventh-day Adventist? And what does Jesus say? I must work the works of him that sent me while it is what? Day. Why, friends? The night cometh when what? No man can work. It says, everyone together, the night is what? At hand. Let the church arouse and go forth to do her appointed work. Let's read. Every believer, educated or uneducated, can what? Can bear the message. Is there an excuse for us to sit idle, friends? John chapter 9, the Bible says, my friends, in verse number 6, are we there? He spat on the ground, and who did he, who did he anoint? Whose eyes? The eyes of a blind man. Friends, who does this blind man represent? He represents the blind Jewish people. Were they blind? Did they reject Christ, friends? 
Who does this blind man also represent? Who received an anointing on his eyes? He represents lukewarm Laodicea. The Bible says we think that we are rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. But we don't even know that we are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And Jesus says now, I counsel thee to buy of me what? Gold tried in the fire. White raiment to cover your nakedness. And the Bible says now, to anoint your eyes with eyesalve. Ah, oh, friends. So what do we need, my friends? Are we blind? What do we need? Ah, oh, friends, we need our eyes to be open. And what should we see? We must see our spiritual degradation. We must see that we need Jesus. We need to be converted. Our friends, the in and out experience has to stop. We must be converted, friends. We need the eye salve. And the Bible says, where did Christ send this man to wash? It's right there. It says, now, once you are anointed with an eye salve, Bible says, go and wash in the pool called Siloam. So, friends, once we acknowledge our sin, once we confess our sin, it's time to receive what? A washing. Friends, we need a literal washing. Baptism. Do you see it? Go dip in the pool of Siloam. This means, my friends, many who profess to be God's people, they need their eyes washed and they need a bodily washing. It's a twofold washing. It's the washing of the water and the washing of the Holy Spirit. Our friends, and the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of truth. And the Bible says, Thy law is the truth. That's the washing we need, my friends. And once we confess our sins sincerely, how will Jesus then declare us? Ah, oh, friends, you got it. First John chapter 1, verse 9, Jesus says, if we confess our sins. But friends, to confess the sins means you must first what? Come on. I'm touching my eyes. To confess the sin, what you, must you first see? You must first see the sin. And that is the greatest problem with lukewarm lady sins. They think that they are in need of nothing. They think that they are okay when they're all wrong, my friend. They're in trouble. But once we acknowledge our sin, Bible says, if we confess our sin, Jesus is faithful and just to do what? To forgive us of our sins and to what now? And to cleanse us of how many unrighteousness? Of all unrighteousness. How will he then declare us right there and then? Righteous, my friends. Righteous. And now watch the punchline. Father, please give us understanding. The Bible says when the man was told to wash. The Bible says uh, he was to wash where? In the pool of? What does Siloam mean? What does Siloam mean? The Bible says Siloam means S-E-N-T. It means sent. I wonder what is the application for us. Once we acknowledge our sin, once we confess uh, our sin, once we surrender everything to Christ, it's time to be washed, it's time to go forward. Christ wants to send us. Ah, friends, but some of us were washed and we're not going anywhere. We need to be washed again. Ah, friends, we profess to have been baptized, but we are not doing any missionary work for Jesus. When this man was washed, the Bible says he came forth seeing. And was he a witness? Was he a witness? 
Oh, friends, is there night coming, friends? It's not here. Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can what? Oh, friends, seven day Adventist. The work that we need to do, we need to do it when? Now, now before it is too. Oh, my friends. But my friends, we have to go beyond just repeating those words. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when what, friends? So friends, was Christ doing a work? Was the blind man who came seeing doing a work? How did they treat him? Look at John 9. How did they treat him? Was the Jewish church Christ's church? Was the Jewish church Christ church before A.D. 34? They're stoning us, Stephen. Was it God's true church, friends? Then when the blind man came seeing, was he preaching? Was he testifying? Was he giving God's glory? Was he serving Jesus? How did the church members treat him? How did the parents of the blind man who came seeing how did they treat him? Watch this carefully. John 9, are we there, my friends? Uh, verse 20 says, uh, his parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now sees, uh, we know not, or who hath opened uh, his eyes, uh, we know not. He is of age, what? Ask him. He shall speak for himself these words, spake his parents, because what, friends? They feared the Jews. Why? The Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the church. Therefore, said his parents, he's of age. Ask him. They were willing to hold on to a local church membership and reject Jesus. Now, some of you who are blind will see something here. Was Christ doing a work? If they kicked the blind man out of the church, even his parents. Before I give you that, let's read that. Look with me. Verse 34. The Bible says, uh, they, the leaders, they, answered and said unto the blind man who came seeing, Thou wast altogether born in what? Sins. And dost thou teach us? And what did they do to the blind man who was now seeing? And they cast him out. Then, friends, how did they treat Jesus? Did they regard Christ as being in the church? No. No. Watch the punchline. So just for the Pharisees to have peace in their church, let's get rid of Jesus. It's the spirit of the papacy. By peace, she shall destroy many. Just to have peace in the church, let's get rid of those who are standing for truth. Some of you look uncomfortable, but that's all right. Jesus says, think not, I've come to send peace but a sword. Listen, so friends, when Jesus says, uh, work while it is day, the night comes uh, when what? No man can work. Question, oh, beloved, from which entity was that true work flowing from? From the synagogue or from the self-supporting arm of the work? Which one? Were those in the synagogues doing such a work? Work while it is day. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Were the leaders in the synagogue doing this work? It was Jesus. It was the blind man who came seeing. The apostles, John, the how did they regard them? As not being in the church as it was then, so shall it. So shall it be, my friends. Watch this. Some of you, as you stand for God's truth, your parents are going to kick you out. Some of you, your daughters, your sons, your children, when you begin to stand for God's truth, they will, they will despise you. 
and vice versa. They will despise you. Look at this carefully. Verse 22, the parents, the Bible says, but what means are we there? Are we there, friends? John 9, Bible says in verse 20, his parents answered saying what? We, are we there? We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means? He now sees, what did they say? Hold on. They were in the church and did not know how to receive spiritual eyesight. Ah, friends. They were in the church and did not have their eyes anointed. And they thought just by being in a local church, that will save them. Friends, God has one church. It is a Seventh-day Adventist church. But don't fool yourself thinking because you belong to a local church that will save you. They were in the church yet blind. And the one who received the eye salve, the anointing, the rain fell, friends, but only fell upon him while the parents missed the experience. And because he was zealous for truth, they said to have peace, we must kick you out. What will happen in these last days, friends? Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh. What comes, friends? What does this night also represent? Friends, it represents death. Go to Ecclesiastes 9 with me. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Where are we going to, my friends? The Bible says, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 9, verse 10, the Bible says, uh, Whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy might. Are we there? Do it with thy might. Why? For there is no what? What's the first one there? For there is no work, nor what? Device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom where? In the grave, whither soever thou goest, Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when what, friends? No man can work when you die. It's over. Father in heaven. Convict the hearts of your people, dear God. Friends, can death come at any time? Why are you playing games with your salvation? And some of you have already had, you have, you have already planned out your Sabbath, your Saturday night, right? You already have plans in some secular things when the Sabbath ends. Some of you, you are going to go right back into the same life of sin Sunday morning, next week. You're playing games, my friends. When death comes, that is it. Hold on there. My friends, you don't have to die for night to come. How does the Bible describe the spiritual atmosphere that surrounded Judas Iscariot when he left God's presence? Bible says in John 13, verse 30, and he went out and it was night. Night for Judas is carried, my friends. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is a day, the night cometh, friends. It can come at death. The night can come even while you are alive. So what does Jesus says now? He says, Work out your own salvation. Work out your what? Your own salvation. With fear and trembling. Why? It is God who what? Worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Who must work, my friends? We must work. But can we work without Jesus? Our friends, must he also work? It says, work out your what? Own salvation with fear and trembling. What now? For it is God who worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Oh, friends, so who must give us strength to do what please God? It's Jesus. 
But friends, will he work without us? Must we cooperate with him, my friends? Oh, beloved, we are told in God's Amazing Grace, the book Amazing Grace, page 319 says, it says, man can what? Man can accomplish nothing without God. Let's read. And God has arranged his plans so as to accomplish nothing in the restoration of the human race without what, friends? The cooperation of the human with the divine. Let's read now. The part, man, is required to sustain is what, friends? It is immeasurably small. That's your part, a small part. Yet, it says, yet, in the plan of God, it is just that part that is needed to make the work a success. So, friends, who has the largest or the larger part for our salvation? Jesus. Even though our part is small, it is a part that is essential to make our salvation successful, our friends. So who convicts us of sin? It's Jesus. Is that the greater part? So when he convicts us of sin, what must we do? No, first acknowledge it. That's the easy part. No, that's the hard part. Because we think we're okay. So once Jesus convicts us of sin, the Bible says we must acknowledge and what? Confess. Now, friends, once we confess, what will he, he then do? He will, con he will pardon us, and he will treat us as if we what? Never sinned. Our oh, friends, is that the greater part? For Jesus to look at us and treat us as if we never, ever sinned. You talk about salvation. You talk about the good news for someone to treat us as if we never sinned. Not a wrong word, never a wrong thought, never a wrong action. What a savior we serve, my friend. Not only will he pardon us and treat us as if we never sinned, our friends, the Bible says he will also give us power to love righteousness and to hate sin. Our friends. That's it. Give us power to obey his Ten Commandments. Who has that power? Us? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. So my friends, the point here is we have to cooperate with whom? With Jesus. Oh, friends, he says, I must work the works of him that what? Go to John chapter 4. Where are we going to, my friends? John chapter 4, the Bible says, uh, I must work the works uh, of him that what? Sent me. While it is day, the night uh, cometh. Uh, when what, my friends? Uh, when no man can work. Beloved, how did Christ end his earthly ministry? What words did he say? John 17 verse 4, Jesus says, Father, I have glorified thee upon the earth. The work you gave me to do, I have finished it. Friends, did Christ, hear me, did Christ descend to this earth to show us how God should live? How powerful God is? No. He came to show us what man can do, what humanity, what humanity can do if we unite with divinity, with God. And what did Christ say? Father, I have glorified thee where? On the earth. I have finished the work. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, my friend. When what? No man can. What does it mean to glorify God on the earth? What is God's glory? What is God's glory? His character. Where do we find God's character? In the Ten Commandments, friends. So what must be our testimony in these last days as it was with Christ? Father, I have glorified thee. 
When the Father looks down, he must not see my sin. He must not see your sin. He must not see in us an unforgiving spirit. He must not see in us malice, envy, and grudge. He must not see in us any form of vengeance or revenge. And some of us right now are guilty. Father in heaven, dear God, we need your spirit. We need you to convict us because the only way Laodiceans can be saved, they must see their standing before you, how you view us. Bless us now, we pray. Friends, we must be able to say, Lord, I have glorified thee on the earth. The work you gave me to do, I have finished it. And what is the greatest work he gave us to do, friends? To get, hear me, hold on. I, I won't tell you what work he gave to Adam. What work did he give to Adam? Talk to me. It is to do what with the earth? After sin. What did God say, Adam? The earth will yield to you after sin. Thorns and thistles. Did God change Adam's work after sin? No. The same work he gave to Adam before sin. You must what? Dress the weir. Dress the garden. But after sin, what happened to the garden? After sin, what happened to the earth? It began to be what? Tears. Tears. What was the ground? The earth a symbol of man's. Man's. Man's mind, my friends. So what is the greatest work? To get the tears out of our hearts. Do you see it, friends? Because many of us are thorny ground hearers. Stony ground hearers. Wayside hearers. But Christ is looking for good ground hearers. And how can this be done, friends? Christ can never declare us good unless the good seed is found in us. Friends, it's by beholding Jesus we shall be changed after his image. No wonder we sung the song face to face with Christ my Savior. Friends, it's by beholding Jesus. And that's why Satan gets us so busy, friends, we don't have time for communing with Christ anymore. No time. Too busy. That's why we can come here and sleep. John 4, are we there? Jesus says, my friends, in verse 34, are we there? He says, my meat is what? My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And what, friends? And to finish his work, our beloved it was Paul who penned the words in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Friends, hear me. How many of us are going through some fiery trials, friends? How many of us? You know, friends, I woke up this morning. I realized my son said, Dad, it was hot last night. I went by the thermostat. It was 81 in the house. 82, 83 before I left. Went outside. AC not working. Generator not working. The devil ate on a Sabbath morning. I wonder what he was trying to do. I wonder what he was trying to do. Ah, oh, friends, the devil's plan, ah, oh, friends, is to prick us, to stick us, is to lead us to discouragement. That's his plan, to get us to murmur and to complain. His plan is to frustrate us. Don't give him any room, friends. Say, Lord, thank you for life. You're worrying about air conditioning. Thank you for life. Thank you for the Sabbath. Uh, don't think about that. But how many of you would have stayed home and cried over the air condition? It can't help you, friend. Crying won't help you. And how many of us are going through fiery trials, my friends? But guess what? Even as we go through fiery trials, Christ expects us to remain faithful. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Ha ha, friend. Did he fight a good fight? You wouldn't say that if you saw what Paul went through. 
If you had seen what Paul went through, you wouldn't say that, friends. The man was battered and bruised. And yet he called it a what? A good fight. Do you know why? His focus was not on the things that are seen. But the things that are not seen. For those which are seen, finish it, are temporal. One day has to come to an One day, friends, I will look back at the generator outside and laugh. Last Sabbath, you went out. <laughs> you thought I would have murmured, right? Laugh at those experiences. But Paul says, I have what? Fought a good fight. I have finished the course. Then what did he say? I have what? Kept the faith. So even though we are going through fire with trials, friends, a battle, Jesus says what? Come on, we have to keep what? Keep what? We have to keep the faith. And this is a part of the third angel's message. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have what? The faith of Jesus. What must we go through in order to develop and to manifest patience? I have fought a good fight. Can anyone here say, Lord, indeed, it's a good fight? Ah, friends, some of you wouldn't even raise your hand. Friends, can you? Come on, raise your hand. Father, I know it's a hard battle, but no, I know it's a good one. It's a good fight. Why? Because at the end, Paul says now, I have fought, let's quote that, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the henceforth. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me on that day. Then Paul says, not to me only. Not to me only but also to those uh, who love uh, his uh, appearing. You see, friends, I want to say this. I have fought a what? Good fight. And even though it's a battle, you have to finish the course. You're not hearing me? Father in heaven, please speak to us. Friends, you have to what? Some of us are quitters, not critters. We are quitters. We have to what, friends? Finish the course. That's why I said, my friends, the time of trouble such as never was is soon to break upon us. And we shall need what? An experience in which we do not now possess. And many of us are too indolent to obtain, friends. I have fought a good fight, but what does God expect of us? To finish the course. Oh, Lord, I'm not finished. Oh, friend, listen. How can we finish this course? Paul says again in Hebrews 12, Wherefore, we are surrounded by such great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. The race uh, set before us, uh, how shall we endure? Uh, looking unto Jesus. Ah, uh, friends, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, oh, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. And where is he now sitting, friends? Uh, friend, and where does Christ promise us that we shall sit if we overcome as he overcame? Ah, uh, friends, so if we keep our eyes fixed on the prize, it will give us strength to say, yes, it's a good fight. And by God's grace, I will finish the course. The songwriter says, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights, new heights. New heights, I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant 
my feet. Finish it. Lord, plant my feet. Where, friends? On higher ground. I have fought a what? I have finished what? I have kept the what? So why leave your discouraged, my friends? Why? If you can't stand now, you won't stand then when the crisis hits. Jesus says in John chapter 9, verse 4, I must what? Work the works of him that sent me. Oh, beloved, you know what? I'm not closing here. Hear me. I'm not closing here. I want to close on a solemn point. Let the joy God just gave to you a while ago be the thing to encourage you now. I must work the works of him that what? Sent me while it is day. Why, my friends? Uh, the night cometh. When what? Listen to this as we close. Early writings, 281. It says, Then I saw Jesus lay off his priestly attire and clothe himself with his most kingly robes. Upon his head were many crowns, a crown within a crown, surrounded by the angelic host. He left heaven. Listen. The plagues were falling upon the inhabitants of the earth. Some were denouncing God and cursing him. Others, listen, listen. Others rushed to the people of God and begged to be taught how they might escape God's judgment. But the saints had nothing for them. Were the works of him that sent me while it is day? Why, friends, the night cometh when no man can work. They, can you, oh, friends, don't picture yourself doing this. But can you picture some folks rushing to you, begging you for the gospel? At that time, you will have nothing. I can't imagine a loved one running to me, begging me at that time for the gospel. Some of you are going to say now, where is safe to serve? I want to go to church now. When is the next prayer meeting? I want to go to church now. When is the next all-night prayer meeting? I would make sure not to be absent. When is the next evangelism? When is the next medical missionary training? I want to be there. It is going to be what, friends? Too late. Listen, we close. We close. It says, uh, the, oh, listen. But the saints had nothing for them. The last tear. The last what, friends? The last tear. For sinners had been shed. The last agonizing prayer offered. The last burden born. The last warning given. The sweet voice of mercy was no more to invite them. When the saints and all heaven were interested for their salvation, they had no interest for themselves. Life and death had been set before them. Many desired life, but made no effort to obtain it. They did not choose life, and now there was no atoning blood to cleanse the guilty, no compassionate Savior to plead for them and cry, Spare, spare the sinner a little longer. All heaven had united with Jesus. As they heard the fearful words, it is done, it is finished. The plan of salvation had been accomplished, but few had chosen to accept it. And as mercy's sweet voice died away, fear and horror seized the wicked with terrible distinctness. They heard the words, too late, too late, too 
great Bob in heaven. We do not want to hear those words. Let's all kneel, friends. Dear God, we do not want to hear those words. Life and death have been set before us. Many desired life, but made no effort to obtain it. Dear God, today, we do not want to hear the words too late. We want to hear the words come. So dear God, today on bended knees we say, give us strength to make the necessary efforts. Give us more love in our hearts that we will surrender everything to you, every known sin. Search us, dear God. Show us our frailties. Try us and see if there be any wicked thing in us, any wicked way in us, and give us strength to walk in the way everlasting. Help us not to be on the other side, rushing to the saints, begging them for the gospel only when it is too late. <laughs>